greatest of his power to who? Us. us. To us. Given to us. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us for who believe? According to the working of his mighty power. I want to break this down. I will say this first. Luke 10, 19. Jesus said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And only some things will hurt you. Yeah. Nothing shall by any means hurt you, is what he says. Who is he talking to? He's talking to Christians, to children of God. He said, I give you power. Now look at this scripture. Remember what Paul said. I want you to understand this. I want you to know this. I want you to have a revelation. I want the light bulb to come on uh, so that you really get it. I want you to, what does he want you to get? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? And I want to look at the meaning of words. It doesn't do any good to read the Bible if you don't understand what the Bible is saying. He said, what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Um, the word exceeding is just superior. Christ is superior in power, far above anything and everything. Christ <laughs> is superior. Now remember, to us, these things are given to us. What is the superior or exceeding greatness of his power to us where who believe? That word greatness means it's dunamis. Everybody's heard this, right? That's where we get our word for dynamite. Um, so what it is saying is, what is the superior dunamis of his power? And, and that word dunamis means uh, ability, abundance, might, and strength. So what does it say? What is, you need to know what is the uh, superior strength, might, greatness of his power to us. His power is given to us. Back to what I said. He said, I give you power to straddle serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I don't have the power within myself to fight a demon. I don't have the power uh, to tread on Satan. But I have the authority through Jesus Christ. Uh, that's what I have. Uh, his power, his authority, uh, his greatness uh, is on loan to me. He, he's like uh, the giant behind me when some guy comes up and, and wants to fight me. Uh, I have him to back me up. I don't have the power, but he has the power. And all I got to do is call on him and step out of the way, and he'll take care of it. It's the same in the life of a Christian. He has promised me that. Uh, all I got to do is call on him and get out of the way. But if I am so focused on that thing in front of me, and I'm not focused on him, I don't call on him. I don't trust him to come and take care of it. Because I'm so caught up in what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Not what is he going to do. That's, right. That's where I need to be. And I don't know how to get this across, but we need to know that's something that belongs to every child of God. That you can give it to God and let go of it. You can give it to God and not have to worry about it. You can give it to God and he will take care of it. You can walk above it. I'm going to prove that to you too. I know I say it a lot here that it can be under our feet because we are in him. I'm going to prove that to you by the word when we get to that. But what he, Paul is wanting these Christians to understand and what we need to understand is that the power of God will work for me against any problem, any situation, any trial, any trouble, uh, any demon, any devil. The power of God will work for me because I am a child of God. He said, what is the exceeding greatness of the power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Uh, so I'm going to give you this whole thing together using the original definitions, what, what it actually means. So what he's saying is, uh, what is the superior uh, ability, abundance, and might uh, of his power to us who believe uh, according to the energios? That's what that word is there. According to working, it's energios. It means 
where it comes from, where energy comes from, a manifestation of that. Christ will manifest his power if we trust him, if we believe him, if we count on him. He will manifest his power on our behalf. Uh, and again, of his mighty power, uh, his ability, his might, his strength. And the last one there, that word power at the end of that uh, verse means a great summation of power. So here's what I want you to get. I know that's a lot of, I'm putting a lot of stuff together, but I'm going to make it real simple and real easy. If we depend on God, if we trust in God, if we are children of God, we have received all the things of God. They belong to us. One of those things, and it says to us who believe uh, that we have access to, is the power of God through Jesus Christ working in our lives. And it is such a power that there is nothing that can stand before it. It is a great submission of power. It is a dunamis. Uh, it is uh, the exercise of that power on that particular event or object or situation. That's what we as Christians have. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you have taken advantage of that? When you have a problem, when you have an issue, when you have a trial, when you have a trouble, how many of us have taken advantage of that? Uh, a lot of times what we do uh, is we say we give it to God, but we don't give it to God. We keep taking it back. Uh, we keep hanging on to it. We can't let go of it. We can't get our eyes off of it. We can't get our mind off of it. And that's why it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And we sink into these places, into these problems, into these troubles, into these trials. But he said, Paul said here, he wants you to understand. He wants you to be enlightened. He, he wants the light to come on. That this is your inheritance. These things belong to you. You just got to know that. It's not enough to wish. It's not enough to hope. It's not enough to understand that it says it in the Bible. You have to believe it. You've got to really believe it. Amen. And I don't know how many of us really believe it. We need to believe it. Why do we see so many amazing things happen in, in the Bible? Because people really believed. People really believed that this could happen, that this would happen, that God could do this. Uh, and we don't believe the way that we need to believe in order to see God move the way that God would move. All of this belongs to the children of God. And, and he said, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were to believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world which is to come, and has put all things under his feet. thing that I talk about a lot of times. I'm going to make some clarifications, and then we'll get to that. Um, all of this is because of Christ. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. He did everything that needed to be done in order that we could become children of God. And once we become children of God, that gives us access to the things of God. We are now uh, co-inheritors with Christ, the Bible tells us. And this is our inheritance. This is what belongs to us through Christ who died for us who saved us, uh, who applied his blood to us, now all these things belong to us. And Christ is set far above all principality, all power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come, and all things are under his feet. Okay, we've talked about that a lot. And it goes on and says, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Who's the church? We are. The born again children of God, worldwide. Anybody who's born again is a part of the church. Christ is the head of the church, right? right? It goes on. Gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. He's the head, we are the body. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Which is the body, 
the fullness of him. The body is the fullness of him. What does that mean? We have access to everything of him. The fullness of Christ. Not just parts of it. Not just this and that. And we don't get to attain these things till we die and go to heaven. We are the, to be, as the church, we are to be the fullness of Christ. We are to manifest the fullness of Christ, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We as a body, we as the church, are to be the fullness of Christ. He is our head. Uh, we are the body. I read you in the scripture that says all things are put under his feet. In relationship uh, to this scripture and to what I'm talking about, where are the feet? They're on the body. Who's the body? Yeah. We are the body. Body of what? Body of Christ. And all things are under his feet. His feet. So if all things are under the feet of the body of Christ, all things are under our feet. I can say that, and you can look at me, and you can nod your head, and you can smile. You might even whisper an amen. It ain't going to do you one little tiny bit of good unless you begin to apply it. It will do you absolutely nothing unless you believe it and walk in it. Unless you believe it and exercise it. Uh, unless you believe it and focus in the right place. Peter could walk on the water as long as he was focused in the right place. Mm -hmm. We can walk over devils and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. We can walk over troubles and trials and tribulations. We can walk over anything. As long as our focus is in the right place. As long as we are the fullness of him. And that's what this says the church is. The fullness of him. That put all things under his feet. Gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him. I have access to everything of Christ. There is nothing that this exceeding great power that we were reading about up here cannot overcome, cannot defeat, uh, cannot put down. Where does that power come from? It comes from Christ. I, if I am his, I am in him. I am his body. I am to be the fullness of Christ. I'm going to go back to where I started reading here in, in Ephesians. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. This is what we need. We need a revelation. We need an enlightenment. We need it to become real. We've talked about this before, but have you ever heard something all your life and then one day it just becomes real? You really get it. You really see it. You really understand. This is what we need. How do I get that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. If you want the things of God and you go asking for them and seeking for them and knocking for them, God ain't going to say, nobody at all. He's going to give them to you. Mm -hmm. If it's your heart, if it's your desire uh, to seek after the things of God, 